Uh, well, here we are again. We were John C. Rosimund California. Uh, Rosamund California, if you want to deal with that one. Uh, it's about 2.37 in the morning. It is March the 12th, 2021. Why, God's name, am I up this early in the morning? I hadn't planned on doing a video this morning. I had planned. I had planned. I had planned. And the problem is plans never go the way you expected in the first place. They never do. There's a thing we had to feel, well, somewhat happy about. Is the stimulus that's here. <laughs> that's being signed to the law and now in the next few weeks we're supposed to be seeing some jingle in our pocket which means more than a quarter more than a few cents in our pocket for some those few cents mean a damn thing it means survival for others, it's just a little chump change that just doesn't mean a damn thing unless you add up the chump change into something usable. We've forgotten about that one. Last year at this time, we had gotten ourselves into a tizzy over the pandemic effects at this point. We had felt there was going to be shortage of everything and anything, so we went insane. Toilet paper, paper towel, napkins, Kleenex. I mean, stuff to wipe your fo face, stuff to wipe your ass, stuff to wipe your nose. Stuff like this was disappearing off the damn shelves. Paper towel. Okay? Paper, towel. This became precious commodity last year. We didn't know if things were going to get so dire we had to get crazy over our excessive need to get overstocked on paper. Of course, how is your nose going to know the difference? if you put something else on it. And again, you need more of this stuff to wipe your ass. If you don't have the toilet paper, you use paper towel. I know it's a very disgusting video I'm talking about at this point over here, but this is a reality check here. Because last year, we were going crazy over this damn stuff. We were trying to kill each other in lines to get into Costco's and other stores, clean the stuff off the shelves, and then wait slowly for the trucks to come in with more stuff so we can go crazy and go after the stuff again. This was last year. This was last year. This year, we didn't have to worry about getting more of this. We have a supply. We, have a su we had plentiful supply. Except it just wasn't get to the areas fast enough. We weren't going insane over this stuff. This became commodity. This became the hottest damn thing. How did that happen? Seriously, how did this happen? The panic buying that we actually had. It's one thing if we actually discovered that our processed manufactured commodity here, if this thing actually, and I'm, I'm going to say this facetiously, I don't know if I can say this facetiously or not, but if this thing actually became the hottest commodity on the planet of the Earth, on the Earth itself, just how insane would we be going over paper like this? And the answer is pretty damn insane. even for a scrap piece of paper. But we were coming that close in America. 
We were going insane over this damn stuff in every damn town and city. The ports couldn't keep it fast enough coming in. The only problem is we had a problem with the ports because of the damn COVID and we didn't know where the hell it was coming from. And we were going crazy. I mean, we were just in the midst of the damn beginning of the, of the nightmare. And meanwhile, politics and politicians were trying to downplay it like crazy. And scientists were playing ketchup. And I'm, I'm not talking about flavoring for your damn meat or for your french fries. I'm talking about catching up like crazy. Scrambling like crazy. Toilet paper. God bless it. Even from Domino's. Couldn't even get this from those guys. No, it's going to be over. It's going to be easy. It's going to be blown over over here. We've got no problems at all. And the numbers keep climbing and climbing and climbing. And people say, no, it's not happening. 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 It's just a flu. It's just a flu. It's just a flu. It's just a flu. Meanwhile, people are getting laid off, uh, laid off for jobs, knocked off from work, industries collapsing left and right, people dying in the, everywhere else. But no, it's fine. I mean, we're getting used to the damn bug. It's just only a flu. We have to get used to it. It's herd immunity. It's this. It's that. It's this. It's that. It's well, what about it? What about it? What about it? Meanwhile, the numbers are flooding the damn hospitals. Well, what about the flu things we had going on? How come nobody ever talked about those damn things? Every single year we went through those. Not like this. Worldwide. Please. You look good. Well, 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 what about, what about, what about? Right. Blame the media. It's all the media's fault. Mommy, what happened to you? Daddy, you just died. It's just a flu. Flu kills people. It's a good thing I didn't get my shot. I hate needles. But my family's dead. It's because of flu. It's flu, right, Doc? No. They had the COVID-19 bug. But what do you mean they were healthy? They shouldn't have died. Did they have any health conditions? No, they were absolutely perfect. Are you sure about that? Well, I'm not so sure about that, but, uh, they were healthy as a horse. Which horse? Because I'm seeing a lot of dead horses. Pick your, uh, pick your stallion here, pal. And that was the thing concerning about this bug, that we didn't even know anything about this COVID-19. For over a year and a half, almost, just about. We've been hearing more and more about the damn bug and how it works and how it operates, and we still deny the damn thing in the first place. And always to this point where <sighs> wait a second, show and tell's not over yet. I have to carry a lot of these damn things in my pockets. Has been used, but still works. Still reusing this thing for a couple of more times and afterwards and the trash can it goes. Oh, there goes our landfills, by the way. A damn pandemic we get and we have to use the damn things like crazy. Almost next to useless, but we still have to show that we're wearing a mask. But if we want to get technical about it, if we want to get cutesy about it, for me, I like carrying my pens. I like carrying my pens because I can also carry paper to write on and write about stuff. But what becomes weirder than that is the damn pandemic becomes fashionable. This is March of 2021, and yet March of 2020, 20, 20, these damn things are starting the industry. Plain white masks. Let's cutesy with Disney. Let's get QZ with uh, Star Trek emblems. And then you got the health insurance companies putting out these damn things. 
all to tell people that we have an epidemic here. You don't want to mess around with the damn thing. Yet people are messing around with the damn thing. And what do we end up? We end up being messed around with. We blame others for everything. I'm going to blame the neighbors because they got brought the COVID-19 over to my place. How dare you? Well, why is that? Because they didn't bother wearing a damn mask. They didn't believe in the mask situation. How dare they believe in the mask situation? How dare you? Well, not that weird, isn't it? Masks. <laughs> Some of these damn things I need to throw in the washer and with the bleach. I've had them in my pocket for so damn long they're getting stains from the other masks. Some of which are being useful. But I have to keep these with me at all times. In case I run out of the plastic ones, or the cloth ones, I got these damn things to go through. I carry a utility vest. Now, I've had one for a long while. Long for years. Put all sorts of stuff in a, in a vest, you know? All sorts of stuff that you may or may not need. Junk and stuff. Just to tidy it up a bit, just to, just to make it look interesting for yourself. But since when have we made masks a fashion trend? Well, we had to. We had to. I mean, now you can go over to the local liquor store, and I'm talking about a local liquor store. I mean, I've got one over here about a thousand yards away from me, approximate. And, uh, well, maybe three or four hundred yards anyway. I can get masks over the counter. I can get surgical masks over the counter. We over the past four or five months I've been doing this thing. <laughs> now I'll take that back. Six months. Six months just started carrying the damn things. And earlier than that, they want people to carry masks or cloth around their face. A uh, handkerchief or a gaiter. Um, neck gaiters. And CDC says, no, those damn things aren't going to work all that much. You need the masks. We have states out there trying to lift the restrictions of wearing the masks. They think it's a joke. There was one particular state who decided to burn their masks while the cities are arguing with the states and getting sued by the state because they still have a mask mandate to protect the population. But the state is playing politics with people's health at this point over here. They're thinking the numbers are so low and we get the vaccinations. Why the hell do we need a damn mask in the first place? Well, for some people it may be a valid reason at this point over here, but if you, if you happen to realize it, how long is it going to take to build up the herd immunity that we keep talking about for the past year? Now, the thing is, what they considered about the herd immunity is they wanted a lot of people in populations to get the damn back, to get the bug, so they can build up the natural immunities in order to prevent other exposure from, other, from everybody else. This means sacrifice. We have to sacrifice for politicians. We had to sacrifice for the good of whatever the hell we're sacrificing for. Which means... Your loved ones, your friends, your family, your co-workers, they must die in the name of the COVID shield here. Because this is the most patriotic thing to do. You must sacrifice yourself for me. Politicians. No wonder we got people screaming and yelling our damn heads off at this point. I can't deal with this shit. I literally can't deal with this shit. I have to keep turning this damn shit off. For the past couple of months, I've been trying to limit my my exposure to the COVID bullshit and the politicians going left and right, puffing and huffing their damn chest, thinking they know better than everybody else. Lying through the shit. Well, that's what politicians do. They lie through their asses off to get the political power that you give them. This is the power of the vote. Let's not get into political 101 over here, shall we? But we can. But we did have political science 101 affecting everybody at this point over here, including the health of everybody. 
we still have a so-called president, yes, I just said that, didn't I? Stating that he's responsible for the vaccines. He should get every credit in the world. He started warp speed. And now he's feeling slighted and jilted and nobody wants to remember his ass for every damn thing. He screwed up on. And that's another video to talk about. But suffice it to say, we've had politicians play head games with us and play head games with this damn bug as it was trying to kill us. Now, the difference between the pandemic of the flu back in our 1918 compared to now is we have technology. We have medical science up to speed. We have all, we have dual tools that they didn't have it back then, but the basic tools they had was social distancing and mask wear. Two things. Now, they didn't know who the hell they had to, hell they had to had, try it again. They've had problems with the flu epidemic back then. Communication was spotty and lousy as it is. The governments didn't want their own people, except for a very few governments, want the people how bad, to know how bad it was. Even in World War I, in the battlefields, they had the flu epidemic going on. Or, I'm sorry, pandemic. Both sides actually had the flu sides. Seizing their heads off, but they were fighting it out in the trenches. If they were strong enough to get up out of the bed and lift up their damn gun and shoot somebody, they were well enough to, sh to fight in the war. If not, they laid in bed. Either they died or they barely survived it. And they had to have their body's immune systems to fight the damn thing. There wasn't that much antibiotics out there. There wasn't any antibiotics out there for flu except for vaccinations, which means you have to have either dead cells or live cells with the damn flu to have your body react to the damn thing in order to build up its own antibody defense system in order to combat the damn thing. You have to turn your body into a living weapon against the damn flu bug. Well, the theory is sound if you have something known. But if you have an unknown object and it's slipping past your damn defense systems of your body, then where the hell is this herd immunity coming from in the first place? The body has to recognize the damn bug as an enemy. Once it's recognized it as an enemy, it's got to build up its forces enough to get after the damn thing. And that's where you have a problem. Because this particular COVID, as they were discovering months down the road, was a sneaky bastard. Now, this ha information is out there, but a lot of people keep thinking that the numbers are so construed or misconstrued. The numbers aren't right. Because people are trying to control you. It's all a control factor. Well, fine. Then go to the hospitals and ERs and you talk to the medical professional. I keep challenging people left and right. Nobody does it. They're too damn lazy. I'm not saying stupid. I'm saying lazy. I've got friends in the industry. I haven't heard from a long while because they're buried alive with patients and people. I barely even get any conversations out of any one of them. But they've seen a lot. And I hope and pray that they still stay healthy and safe and that way from this damn bug and take every damn precaution. Because this bug don't play. I've told people that for months. I've kept my ear open to the scientists, what they were talking about at this point over here. And yeah, there's other scientists and other doctors who have always had conflicting viewpoints concerning about it. This is, medic this is medicine. Some doctors have one particular treatment that they think it works because of what they heard or what they've experienced. And the other ones are going by other scientific data that they're looking at the numbers. So basically, medicine's a crapshoot. But it also depends on your body and your biological system in the first place. Whether or not if your system is going to be accepting the medication or vaccination in order to deal with the damn bug. Or if your, med if your body is going to be suited enough to deal with the bug without all that damn crap. It all depends upon you and your biology, 
and you don't know until you get yourself to be turned into a damn lab rat. But this is the way medicine is. We have to have lab rats so we can understand the efficacy of the medications and how the vaccinations actually work on us. Because if we get a ballpark range and we actually know what the side effects are looking for, then most of us will be right and the other ones are, are going to be like, Ugh. But I know that's an exaggeration right there and that's a comedy break. Of course, people look at it as a damn insult. There had been medications that turned people into something worse than that. Yes, drink break. That is Gatorade and water. Scary combination. Hydrates you, but it probably also makes you more susceptible to more diabetes down the road. At least for me, it, it, it does. Gives you a little bit more electrolytes. But I would prefer a good straight shot of orange juice myself. There are alternatives to other things, but some things you don't have a choice in. And this damn bug that we've got. It has changed our life and our industry and everything else we know for a long time. I'm not saying forever. I'm saying for a long time. Because that's all we got is time. And not very much of it either sometimes. Last year we were going ape over paper shortages. We didn't go ape over coffee cake shortages or coffee shortages or creamers or let alone uh, other kind of processed foods that we eat or hamburgers or hot dogs we didn't have any meat shortages until we actually had the stuff happening over there maybe salmonella or, or something else came over and screwed around with the damn processing and then we had meat shortages left and right. But people didn't ride in the street because of the damn thing, no. But it didn't storm the damn uh, Costco's for it either. But they could have. But toilet paper? Don't mess around with someone's toilet paper. So, we now have the vaccine vaccines over the past couple of months. Actually, the past three or four months. I don't care who gets the damn credit. I don't give a shit at this point. Now we're getting slow vaccinations going into our arms. And it's up to each state to make that kind of determination. And because it's going to take us time to build up the immunity left and right to get this damn bug taken care of. We still have to wear the masks. We have to. Of course, other people say, well, no, we got the ar shot in the arm. We're going to be fine. Are we? Seriously? Just because you had the flu vaccine doesn't mean you're going to get the flu or don't get the flu. You'll still get some side effects or concerning about the damn thing. Once the flu knocks her in your ass, you have somewhat of a shield to protect you from it. How about the people that have already actually had the damn COVID in the first place and still get the shot? Well... There's still some efficacy in that, too. However, your body's already been compromised. According to what the medical establishments are saying at this point over here. And yes, I know the, the conflict of interest at this point over here. Some small select groups here and there are saying that the larger groups don't know what the hell they're talking about. The smaller groups say they have all the data and the facts. And they've been trying to produce that information out there. And I know there's been a tug of war concerning about who to believe and who not to believe. Your doctor may lean on one side or another side. And we always continue you, trust your damn doctors because they're trying to get all the facts they can. Well, maybe they believe in alternate medications. Okay, fine. Maybe they believe in a different theory altogether. Maybe they believe this damn thing's a flu bug. They're going to get their ass laughed out of, out, of, uh, out of the associations for that one, that's for sure. But when they started discovering other people having side effects from the COVID, I mean, after it plays havoc with your damn system, it leaves, you're not completely okay. You're still compromised. 
not a theory. They're proving it into a fact. They're getting medical debt on that. That's what scares the hell out of me. Because once, if I happen to get the damn COVID virus, I may be fine, but I'm still going to have to be careful about everybody else wearing a mask when I have to. Now, fortunately for me, I don't remember having it. Anything like that during winter of last year. No. Nope. Nothing mild. Nothing like that. I haven't even been tested yet. <sighs> and yeah, I'm afraid to. I got a hang up concerning about the medical establishment. It's my own damn personal stuff. I've done too many videos regarding that situation. So, my own damn hang ups will prevent me from taking care of myself properly in order to protect you properly. If you happen to meet me in the street, you don't know whether or not I get the vaccination or not. There's no mark in the forehead or armpits or anything else like that. There's no card I can present to people saying, See, see, see I got this, I got this, I got this card over here. It says, I got the shots, I got the shots. I'm protected. Congratulations, you're not protected by the damn bug, you think, for a short time. What do you mean for a short time? Well... They're still measuring the the efficacy and the length of it. How long does the vaccine last in your system? And then afterwards, are you going to be needing any more? Some of them say it's a lifetime, but they're still trying to gather the data. See, when they start testing out vaccines, they have to do a long, drawn-out way to understand how this damn bug works. As I understand... For a lot of research I've done these days. And believe me, I'm no damn expert. Disclaimer time. I'm an observer. I learned a hell of a lot of shit in my lifetime. I've got no MDs or anything else in front of me. I'm just a study. I'm just a student of things, okay? So, that's all I am. But as far as I understand concerning about the, the bug itself... It changes and mutates. It's now got variants left and right. Now, if you've got a certain type of bug here. Let's get this moved a little bit here. Lighting sucks. For the most bugs that we understand and know about, we have baseline information, which means we have decades upon decades of research on how certain viruses work. So we can produce the antibodies necessary. And during these case studies, we could determine how long in length, side effects, who's susceptible, who's not susceptible. We have medical data on this one. This is a fresh, new bug. Last year, or year before, when she, when it came into, in a human contact. It started killing people left and right. And we thought it was actually a standard flu bug. Well, we tried to treat it as a standard flu bug. It didn't respond to any of those kind of treatments. It takes time to gather the medical data. Now, for vaccinations to be effective, we need baseline information. We need to know anything and everything about this damn bug in order to produce the vaccinations. And then we have to have studies after studies after studies to see the length it takes for the vaccination to work and on which groups of people and for how long. What are the side effects, if any? And how long will this vaccination last in a person? It takes years to get that information. And we're doing this on a rush job. So we are all lab rats of the sort, but we need to have something going because we got no choice. Either that, constantly wear the damn mask and isolate ourselves for a hell of a long while and don't deal with anything. But people said, no, we got herd immunity. We're going to let somebody else's immunity help us because once they get the bug, we're not going to get the bug. Once they develop the immunity from the damn bug, if they live long enough. But they should because it's a standard flu bug. Oh, look, he just fell off and died. Or 
Somebody else is already suffering through the damn bike, and once he gets out of the damn thing, he's trying to tell you, This bike ain't fun, boys and girls, but I ain't lived and survived. <laughs> oh, heart attack, heart attack. Uh. You think I'm making a joke about this damn thing, but it's not serious enough in any way. This bug leaves people's systems compromised. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to know about it. They don't want to learn about it. But that's all right. Medicine is a 50-50 crapshoot with us in the first place. But I'm not going to knock against the damn thing. I'm not going to knock against it because it saved my ass. Even though I got a lifelong deep-seated resentment against the medical establishment. My own personal thing. But I'm not... I'm not thumping on people's heads saying, you got to stay away from these people because of what I've gone through. No, that's between you and the doctors and God and everyone else. That's your decision, not mine. My decision, I'm still trying to live my way. And it's usually conflicting with everybody else at the same time. So I try to stay out of people's toes. Mine are grody enough anyway. We just hope in the next year or two this will be downgraded to where we think that we've got it to the level where we can deal with it as a flu season or a flu epidemic. Because this damn thing has killed a hell of a lot of people. And people keep looking at other data or concerning about other things and they're going to argue over the damn figures and facts at this point over here. They're going to squibble and squabble and argue and quibble about it. COVID related, not COVID directly. <sighs> there had been medical conditions we've had out there that have compromised the body to the point where other viruses and other conditions set up and killed the person. There's medical data on that as well. But apparently this, this kind of logic doesn't apply. Because people aren't paying attention to that one. They look at the medical deaths. They look at the records and say, We're looking for COVID direct! Think of it as a party animal coming in. Okay, you ever seen the movie Animal House? Anybody who's anybody these days has heard of the movie Animal House back in the 70s. Come on. You've had that damn thing in your college dorms, in your, in your college histories. Everybody knows that there was a Delta Chi in your campus somewhere. You have a bunch of drunkard idiots left and right going crazy. You happen to grow up in that time period. You understood what that meant. There are certain frat houses out there, and maybe sororities too, but... <sighs> The concept of Delta Chi was like a cancer in the order of things on a campus and how things progressed. Think of it as Delta Chi invading your particular campus and what havoc it sprung. Now you're looking at Delta Chi as the COVID. No, I'm looking at Delta Chi as the doorway to everything else on the campus. The legacy is the variants. The variants. Doing a hell of a lot more damage. And then they're affecting anything else. And those things are causing more and more damage to the body one way or another. Lingering effects are opening the door for other, everything else going on. This is a reality check. This is not fiction writing. This is not science fiction. This is reality, and it scares the living crap out of us. And this is what we have to deal with. So this is my take this morning concerning about the anniversary of what we're dealing with right now. As we're talking about facts and figures about job losses and about economic downturns and the slow upgrade we've got coming up, you got to love it when they start talking financial stuff. It goes over the head sometimes. But you understand that when you lose a job because of an industry crash and burned, and you got no one else to blame. It kind of pisses you off a little bit. You're part of, 
you get added to the numbers that say, yes, you're the ones that lost the jobs because of this certain factor, because of this certain factor, because of this certain factor. Well, the factor we got right now is the damn pandemic affecting everybody across the board. But slowly but surely, we're trying to adapt and how to circumnavigate this damn bug. Some people don't want to do it. They still think it's a damn flu bug. Well, even if the numbers tell you something, they'll say the numbers lie. Wait until it starts becoming personal to them. Wait until they start losing family members or friends to this damn thing. Then tell me about this damn bug. It's a chill, chilling thought to think about this early in the morning. Time for Betty Bye, boys and girls.